I'm going to talk about the effects that we have seen with stem cells and exosomes in our patients uh, before and after treatment regarding brain waves from EEGs and in the context of the youthfulness of the brain and potential anti-aging effects. I'm frequently asked about anti-aging effects of stem cells and exosomes, and the truth is that there's not a whole lot of data. I have spoken elsewhere and will again about effects that we have seen on DNA epigenetics, DNA methylation, telomere length, and we have seen interesting positive results. Um, that's another topic for another day. But today I'm going to talk about the brain. Uh, I think that we would all agree that a, a brain that is more youthful and functions in a more youthful fashion is better. Um, now, whether this correlates with living longer, hard to know. The truth is that as uh, massive as the anti-aging industry, if you will, is, there's really no way to tell if interventions make you live longer without doing very, very long-term studies. So what happens is that we use um, indices of increased health and um, presume that it's likely that if you're, if you're healthier, that perhaps you will live longer. Um, and, and even if you don't, I think the idea that living healthier is a benefit is, is clear. So with that in mind, let me talk about the brain. Um, what I'm going to tell you is all the results of work that Dr. Tim Royer, one of the uh, world's uh, preeminent neuroscientists, uh, has done with our patients. Um, he has um, some of the greatest expertise in this area of anyone I know, and he has tested our patients with uh, EEGs before and after stem cell and exosome uh, treatment. So. In, in brief, I will tell you his findings. I will tell you that we're going to be getting a long-form podcast interviewing him at some point in the near future. But what I'm going to present are some of the basic uh, conclusions that he has found. Um, really, he has said that the brain um, appears to, to be more youthful after exosome and stem cell treatments in general. Now, that's a broad generalization, and it isn't every patient. The results vary, but it has been pretty consistent. Um, now, again, whether this will make you live longer or not, we don't know. And more importantly, just having a lab test that shows something better isn't really all that useful. If you're um, going to be drawing any sort of even preliminary conclusions, this has to be corroborated with clinical results, which is our main focus. So we will treat people for clinical reasons and then see how they respond and how they do. The EEG is corroborative, but... Um, we try very hard to try to get objective data, whether it's EEGs or telomere length or other things, um, MRIs of the brain in some cases, uh, to, to kind of corroborate with objective data what we're seeing clinically. He has done uh, EEGs in, in several contexts. So we published a paper on autism, a small clinical series of 10 patients, and he did EEGs before and after on some of them. Now, many of these people are young and have to be sedated, and if they're sedated, one can't really do a reliable EEG. But we had three patients who didn't need to be sedated, and we got good EEGs before and after. And what he found was consistent um, uh, improvement uh, increase in what are called theta waves from the parasympathetic nervous system. Theta waves correlate more or less with calmness. Younger brains have more of them. Um, as people get older, they have less of them on average, and they tend to sleep less well. And this decrease in theta waves seems to correlate with decreased sleep. One of the things that we've noticed with uh, uh, stem cells and exosomes in general um, is an improvement in sleep, sometimes a dramatic improvement in sleep. So this was something that was uh, seen consistently in these um, autistic patients. Uh, more recently, however, he, we have undertaken a much larger scale um, attempt to get EEGs on the patients that we're treating with exosomes that I've talked about in other forums for neurocognitive disorders, such as Parkinson's disease, ALS, um, Alzheimer's, Lewy body dementia, and MS. Um, he has done well over 100 EEGs on patients of ours. He comes to Antigua, and he and his wife, Amy, who is a very bright uh, nurse who works in the space as well, um, do EEGs on patients, usually in the morning, and then we will treat in the afternoon. So we've um, done a lot of EEGs before. We are now getting post-treatment EEGs. We have them so far in 11 patients. And again, these will be broad generalizations, but he has said, and, and we have seen, really striking differences before and after in many of these patients. I, I'm not prepared now to break them down 
by diagnoses um, as to which versus the other. But in a general way, the results have been consistently good along uh, the spectrum of diagnosis of neurocognitive um, disorders. So what he has seen is an increase in these theta waves, these columnist waves, if you will, um, that I mentioned before. Um, he's also seen a decrease in, um, in, in high beta waves. Um, the high beta waves are signs of stress. So these findings show increased calmness, a more useful brain, youthful brain, sorry, and decreased um, stress. And this correlates with the clinical results that we've been seeing. Our results are early, we're still less than a year, um, but we have uh, treated now more than 75 patients and depending a little bit on the diagnosis, have seen um, overall good results and clinical improvement in people. So it's exciting to us to be able to correlate this clinical improvement with this EEG uh, data. So this is kind of a long digression from what I said at the beginning about anti-aging. But um, in addition to people functioning better, these changes, the uh, increased theta calmness waves, if you will, and the decreased high beta stress waves correlate with a more youthful appearance of the brain. So this is exciting. I think in, in all of anti-aging and all of the effects and ravages that aging has on us, the neurologic effects um, overall are some of the most feared and some of the most severe. We treat many manifestations. We do a lot of work with arthritis um, and which, you know, creaky joints tend to get to be more prominent as you get older and have had uh, overall quite good success. But the ability to um, uh, allow the brain to function in a more youthful way, to maybe be more youthful, is, is quite exciting. Again, whether this will translate into living longer is hard to say, and not, not a question that's gonna be answered anytime soon. But if it allows our brain to function in a more youthful manner for however long uh, we are privileged to live, that's obviously a very uh, worthwhile and useful goal. We are right in the middle of the study. We're doing many more people collecting more data. But again, we have a lot of data points now, enough uh, to say that this is a real effect. The other question, of course, is how long will this last? Will people um, be better um, a few months afterwards when we'll commonly test them and then revert to baseline in six months or a year? Uh, we, we don't know. Um, we will be answering those questions, but it's going to take a lot of time to answer them. In the meantime, however, the EEG corroboration that we have seen with the good uh, clinical results we are getting, uh, we think is exciting, and I wanted to uh, give you a report as to uh, where we stand with that now.